Hey guys, today I'll show you a horror thriller movie named The Unearthed Grave. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. This story begins with a shaman named Huarin. One day, Huarin and her fellow disciple Gil were hired to come to the United States. It was said that a rich family was having problems. Their young son had been crying continuously since birth, and doctors were at a loss. When they arrived at the baby's room, Huarin whistled at the infant, his ears seemingly attuned to some unseen presence. Whistling is a shamanic technique used to test for spirits, as ghosts react to the sound. After whistling, Huarin took a small burlap bag from her box and placed it on the baby's chest, examining the child's pupils. Meanwhile, Gil continuously chanted scriptures over the baby. After completing the examination, Huarin told the employer's wife that similar phenomena must have occurred with the baby's father and grandfather. Hearing this, the previously skeptical wife was stunned. They followed Huarin and Gil back to the employer's home, where Park, the baby's father, confirmed the strange occurrences. Park recounted that his family were immigrants from Korea, and his brother had died in a mental hospital. He himself heard screams, and felt like someone was strangling him whenever he closed his eyes. Huarin concluded that the family's ancestral graves were problematic. In other terms, the restless ancestors were suppressing their descendants. However, Huarin, being a shaman, needed an expert for such matters. Huarin recommended a geomancy master named Kim, renowned in their homeland. Kim was able to determine the auspiciousness of a grave by tasting the soil. That night, Huarin and Gil visited Kim back home and explained their predicament in America, seeking his help. Enticed by the generous reward, Kim agreed without hesitation and brought along his partner, an undertaker with some geomancy knowledge. According to Huarin, Kim and his partner only needed to relocate Park's grandfather's grave. However, Park had an additional request, to immediately cremate the remains without opening the coffin. Kim found this puzzling, as the usual procedure required opening the tomb, cleaning the bones, and then relocating or cremating. Despite the unorthodox request, Kim decided to inspect the gravesite first. The grave was located in Gangwon province. After driving through winding mountain roads and climbing a desolate hill, they reached the gravesite at the summit. Both Kim and Huarin found it odd, as placing a grave on a mountaintop didn't align with geomancy principles. Upon arrival, Kim was even more astonished. The grave was simple and barren, with no name on the tombstone, an anonymous grave. Additionally, there were numerous foxes around, which are considered an ominous sign when near a grave. Park explained that the grave's simplicity was due to rampant grave robbers at the time. Despite this, he believed it was a treasure because a high monk had chosen the spot to honor his grandfather's great service to the country. After assessing the surroundings, Kim bluntly refused the job. When Warren asked why, Kim admitted that the grave was an exceptionally rare, malignant site with overwhelming dark energy. Disturbing it could result in everyone's demise. Desperate, Park begged Kim to save his newborn son. Kim, however, questioned whether Park was hiding something. It turned out there were two lines of numbers on the back of the tombstone, which Kim identified as precise coordinates. Such precise calculations led Kim to suspect that the high monk had ulterior motives by choosing the grave site here. Park admitted he was hiding nothing. For safety reasons, Kim insisted on refusing to help. At this point, Warren suggested trying a local ritual, a form of witchcraft involving the sacrifice of animals to the gods to transfer misfortune and block evil spirits. This meant the ritual and the grave relocation had to be conducted simultaneously. On the day of the relocation, Warren made preparations. Five pigs and five workers, each born in the year of the pig, were selected. The worker's hair was cut and placed inside the pig's mouths, symbolically linking them. The workers then began to dig up the grave. As they did so, the malevolent energy from the grave would transfer into the pigs. Huarin's task was to remove this dark energy through the ritual. As the undertaker recited the funeral prayers, Huarin began her ritual dance. At the climax of the ritual, the pigs were cut open, and the workers started breaking into the tomb. They quickly unearthed the coffin. Kim saw it was covered with a bright red cloth, and the coffin was made from a type of wood once reserved for royalty. The workers smoothly lifted the coffin out and placed it in the hearse, ready for cremation. Unexpectedly, one worker got greedy and wanted to see if there were any valuables in the grave. He was nearly bitten by a snake, which he killed with a shovel. As the snake died, the clear sky suddenly turned dark and it began to rain heavily. Kim advised Park that cremating in such weather would prevent the soul from reincarnating into a good family. 
they decided to temporarily store the coffin in the hospital morgue. While eating, one worker secretly opened the coffin. As the lid lifted, Warren fainted. When she awoke, they learned that an evil spirit had escaped from the coffin. It was the malevolent spirit of Park's grandfather. That night, Park's father, who was in America and already mentally unstable, heard his deceased father's voice calling him. He opened the window and saw his father's evil spirit in the glass. Moments later, the spirit tore out his heart. The old man's wife, dancing in the room, unknowingly danced with the spirit in TikTok style and was also killed. Huarin knew the spirit, driven by deep resentment, would kill all its descendants. Park, being the spirit's grandson, was in grave danger. Huarin instructed Kim to return to Seoul to check on Park while she stayed in Gangwon province to perform a soul-summoning ritual. As predicted, Park was found unconscious in his hotel bathtub. Once the ritual was ready, Huarin planned to draw the spirit into Gil's body. As the ritual progressed, Park woke up and the spirit entered Gil. Huarin confronted the spirit, urging it to release its hatred and stop harming people. The spirit refused, intent on taking all its descendants with it. Suddenly, Gil vomited black water, signaling that the spirit had escaped. At the hotel, Park received a call from Kim, who said he was on his way. Strangely, Kim's voice was also heard outside the door. Confused, Park didn't know whom to trust. The Kim on the phone earnestly urged him to open the window, claiming his grandfather would protect him. In desperation, Park trusted the voice on the phone and opened the window, only to hear an eerie laugh. Realizing his mistake too late, he saw his grandfather's spirit on the ceiling. The real Kim burst in to find Park possessed, speaking fervently in a Japanese soldier's tone about the unification of East Asia. Park spat blood and collapsed. As Kim tried to explain, Park muttered in Japanese, the fox severed the tiger demon and then died in a twisted posture. The spirit fled. Recognizing the danger, Kim instructed Park's secretary to contact the U.S. immediately, stressing that the grandfather's remains had to be cremated without delay to save Park's young son. Meanwhile, in the American hospital, an old hand hovered over the baby, weakening his vital signs. Fortunately, the undertaker obtained permission just in time and cremated the grandfather's remains, coffin and all. As the coffin burned, the old spirit dissipated in agony and the baby was saved. Kim thought the ordeal was over, but the true horror had only just begun. After the cremation, the worker who killed the snake during the grave excavation fell ill. Kim visited him and the worker believed his sickness was a punishment for breaking a taboo. He asked Kim to find the two severed halves of the snake and perform a ritual to appease its spirit. Returning to the mountain grave site, Kim first scattered salt around the area before digging. He found the snake, which oddly still twitched despite being in two pieces. Underneath the snake, Kim discovered another coffin, an unusual burial where the coffin was standing upright, wrapped tightly in chains as if to prevent it from being opened. Kim called Warren and others to help. After some discussion, they decided to unearth the coffin and bring it down the mountain. This time, instead of taking the coffin to the hospital morgue, they left it at a temple, which Kim noticed earlier had some sacred symbols on its sign. The monks at the temple confirmed the site was a sacred treasure trove, maintaining a hundred-year-old lineage. Explaining their purpose, Kim asked the monks for permission to stay and temporarily store the coffin. The monks agreed, and the coffin was placed in the temple's storeroom. Warren asked the monks for glutinous rice, which she sprinkled around the coffin, then poured horse blood over the rice as a way to seal the dark energy inside. Warren sensed that whatever was inside the coffin might be more dangerous than the grandfather's malevolent spirit. Earlier, Kim found a red coffin cloth in the grave, indicating the grandfather's identity as a high-ranking official in the Japanese colonial government. This meant the grandfather was not a patriot, but a traitor who colluded with the Japanese. Kim initially thought the high monk had buried Park's grandfather in an evil site as punishment. However, the aunt denied this, revealing that the high monk was actually Japanese, leaving her puzzled as to why a loyalist to Japan would be buried in such a place. Deciding to cremate the coffin the next morning to avoid further trouble, Warren consulted her senior about the high monk. The senior warned that the high monk was a famous Japanese psychic master whose fate was rife with calamity and not human. This revelation left Warren uneasy. That night, a blood-soaked monk appeared before Gil, muttering about someone having taken his liver. Gil hastily drew a charm, which dispelled the vision. Realizing something was wrong, he investigated and found the monk missing, but the storeroom lock was intact. 
In the nearby pigsty, he saw that the hearts and livers of all the pigs had been removed. Not far away, a massive, ghostly figure was devouring the monk's body. Gil woke Huarin, and they hurried to the storeroom, discovering the coffin broken and its contents gone. Near the opened coffin, Huarin found an old Japanese general's helmet. The bloody figure of the general then appeared outside. It turns out the coffin had contained a zombie general from the Japanese Sengoku period. To save herself, Huarin falsely claimed to be the general's subordinate, but was quickly exposed. She fled for her shitty life, and Gil arrived to help but was severely injured by the general. Fortunately, being in a Buddhist temple, the general clasped his hands together and transformed into a wisp of fire floating in the air. Kim and the others arrived, and under the fire's light, each person's deepest fears seemed exposed. Gil, injured, was taken to the hospital. Huarin shared her insights with Kim, explaining that in the world of shamanism, ghosts lack physical bodies and spirits have no tangible form, making them defeatable by humans. However, the zombie general they encountered had both feet and a shadow, indicating he was not a ghost, but a living spiritual entity. Such spiritual entities are souls of humans or animals attached to objects, evolving over time. Given that the Sengoku period was over 500 years ago, the appearance of the general's spiritual entity in Korea and his burial in the mountain grave puzzled Huarin. Meanwhile, Gil, severely injured by the general, was surrounded by malevolent energy. Huarin summoned her fellow shaman seniors to perform a ritual. Under the general's influence, Gil revealed that the general had slain thousands on the battlefield. When asked about the general's whereabouts, Gil kept repeating the coordinates inscribed on the back of the gravestone. At the same time, Kim noticed a painting in the hospital corridor depicting Mount Pektu, known as the backbone of the Korean peninsula. The term backbone reminded him of a drawing made by Park before death, showing a fox cutting off a tiger demon. To verify his suspicions, Kim returned to the temple. The monks had previously told Kim a legend that the unnamed grave on the mountain contained no treasure, but had drawn many grave robbers, some of whom left their tools in the temple. Kim accessed these tools in the storeroom and found a photograph labeled Iron Blood Group. The back of the photo bore the inscription, My Land, My Comrades. The resolute expressions of the people in the photo suggested they were not mere grave robbers. To figure it out, Kim used those tools to dig in the mountain and unexpectedly uncovered the general's body. Returning to Warren and the others, Kim theorized that the general being in the grave meant he had returned to his original place. The drawing of the fox cutting off the tiger demon symbolized the Korean peninsula, shaped like a crouching tiger. The coordinates on the gravestone pointed to the tiger's waist, the 38th parallel north. The fox represented the high monk, a Japanese psychic master, who had placed the grave and driven an iron stake into the tiger's waist, splitting the Korean peninsula at the 38th parallel. There was an urban legend from the Japanese colonial period that the Japanese had surveyed Korea's lands and driven iron stakes into critical points to suppress Korea's vitality and disrupt its national fortune. Kim deduced that Park's grandfather's coffin was placed above the general's upright coffin due to the Iron Blood Group. During the Japanese occupation, the Iron Blood Group was a patriotic Korean organization. To save the country, they aimed to remove the iron stake placed by the high monk. By placing the traitorous official's coffin directly above the stake, the Iron Blood Group ensured that the heavily guarded grave would prevent others from approaching and disturbing the site. Huarin speculated that the Japanese general was buried in the upright coffin to guard the iron stake. Determined to save people and the country, Kim insisted on removing the stake. Huarin warned that the general was a highly malevolent entity and could not be easily destroyed. After a discussion, the group decided on a strategy to lure the general away from the grave. They wrote talismanic scriptures all over their faces to ward off evil, and then went to the mountain where the grave was located. They scattered the general's favorite food, fish, around the mountain base and the grave to lure him into the forest. Huarin would distract the general, giving Kim time to remove the stake. At the hour of the ox, the general emerged from the grave to eat the fish he loved in life. At the same time, Gil, still controlled by the general in the hospital, mimicked chewing motions. The general took the bait and followed the trail of fish into the forest, under a wrinkled tree. Seizing the opportunity, Kim and his partner entered the grave to find the iron stake. 
Quarren had previously hidden burning straw in the tree hole to create the illusion of being a tree spirit, speaking in mysterious phrases to stall time. She demanded the general reveal his history. The general explained that he was a great Japanese commander from over 400 years ago, feared on the battlefield for his prowess. After his death, a psychic master sewed his head back on, hit a red-hot katana in his body, and buried him upright at a carefully chosen location. The psychic master cursed him to become a zombie, eternally guarding the grave and the stake for Japan. Huarin demanded the general release Gil, but her human identity was soon exposed. In the dark forest, the general advanced menacingly towards Huarin. Just in time, Huarin's deceased shaman grandmother appeared, allowing Huarin to escape. Meanwhile, Kim and his partner searched the grave but couldn't find the legendary iron stake. At that moment, the general, now a fiery apparition, headed towards the grave. Seeing the fire, Kim realized the real stake was the katana inside the general's body. The katana, heated until red hot, merged with the ghost fire once the general became a zombie forming fire metal. This explained why the general was buried upright in an upright coffin. The katana had to be inserted straight into the ground. The katana was both the fire guarding the grave and the metal stake piercing the earth. As the fiery orb shot into the graveyard, the general was about to rip out Kim's liver. In a desperate move, Huarin sprayed a bucket of horse blood at the general. Under the influence of the horse blood, the general's armor instantly melted, revealing the crimson samurai sword within. The unrelenting general grabbed Huarin and the Undertaker. In this critical moment, Kim thought of how water counters fire and metal counters wood. With this realization, Kim picked up a wooden stick and thrust it into the general's foot. He then smeared his own blood on the stick to make it wet before striking the general. The burning samurai sword represented metal and fire, while the wet wooden stick symbolized water and wood. Using the theory, Kim finally succeeded in making the samurai sword and the general vanish into thin smoke. As the general's spirit dissipated, Gil, who had been under his control in the hospital, also regained consciousness. The century-old curse was finally lifted. In the end, the Undertaker continued his work in funeral services while Huarin and Gil carried on their shamanic practices. Kim, now recovered from his injuries, resumed his geomancy and grave-breaking services. The land, once trampled by enemies, seemed to have finally found some peace. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.